This is Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Farm, we shall discuss the significance of the single ticketing system on traffic violations. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smart Sports and Centers and the proper way of joining traffic in a rotunda or roundabout. This week's five pair shall be about the limit of number of passengers in PUVs. Showcase this week shall have the hybrid mid-size sedan from Toyota, the Camry 2.5 V HEV. While for race weekend, we shall have the highlights of the 2023 Philippine Autocross Championship Series Round 3. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's episode of Motoring Today. Join us. Thinking of buying a car but don't know what model you want? Then visit the Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival presented by Caltex Philippines on May 4-7 at the SM Mall of Asia Concert Grounds. Get the best deals and test drive the latest models from Ford, GAC, GWM, Honda, Hyundai, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Subaru, Suzuki, Toyota, and WM. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival, presented by Caltex Philippines. The one-stop shop for the latest car models in cooperation with SM offices and SM Mall of Asia Complex. Ready? Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. Traditional jeepneys seem to have gotten a new lifeline. Department of Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista says they can stay until 2028 with one condition. Department of Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista is now saying traditional jeepneys can continue plying present routes until 2028 as long as they are roadworthy. Bautista is quoted in newspapers as saying traditional jeepneys can be allowed to continue plying routes as long as their engines, brakes, and seats are found to be in good conditions. At the same time, Bautista is encouraging jeepney drivers and operators to consolidate with cooperatives and companies to benefit from incentives and loan packages to modernize. The deadline is December 31, 2023, but Bautista says the DOTR will continue to dialogue with different organizations about the consolidation. Earlier DOTR reports said only around 6,000 to 200,000 jeepneys have been modernized, while only 60% have been consolidated. This is certainly good news for drivers and operators of traditional jeepneys. But people may ask, how do we ensure only truly roadworthy traditional jeepneys remain on the road? Meanwhile, 
Commuters have to wait some more for the common station that is said to make it a lot more convenient to connect from one LRT line to another. The unified Grand Central Station on North Edsa in Quezon City was supposedly to be finally be operational in May of this year. But the Department of Transportation said it will again postpone the opening of the common station designed to make it convenient to transfer from one right rail transit to another. The unified Grand Central Station links the light rail transit line 1, the metro rail transit line 2, the metro rail transit line 7, and the future Metro Manila subway. While the physical structures of the common station, including a 13,700 square meter concourse area, are basically complete, a few more things need to be installed before it can be fully operational, according to the DOTR. Published reports, DOTR Secretary Jaime Bautista said the common station needs to complete facilities for, among other things, the automatic fare collection system, as well as the signaling system for the trains. Bautista also said that the viaduct connecting the LRT-1 from the Roosevelt station to the common station still needs to be completed. The common station can serve up to 500,000 passengers per day. An intermodal terminal under the station will allow commuters to transfer to buses, jeepneys, or taxis conveniently. Bautista said the plan is to open the common station before the end of the year. Commuters should hope the DOTR finally resolves the remaining issues, preventing the opening of the common station on schedule. Continuing, despite earlier calls for review, the Land Transportation Office is implementing the new omnibus guidelines for the accreditation and regulation of private driving schools. The Land Transportation Office has announced it will begin enforcing the new omnibus guidelines for the accreditation and regulation of private driving schools. In announcing this, the LTO claimed in newspaper reports that driving schools including members of the Association of Accredited Driving Schools of the Philippines, Inc., the Philippine Association of LTO Accredited Driving Schools have agreed to support and comply with the new regulations. Among other things, the new guidelines placed a cap on fees for theoretical and practical driving courses charged by private driving schools, 3500 for motorcycles and 5000 for light vehicles. The new guidelines also set fines and penalties for violations of the new regulations starting from 50000 and a six-month suspension for first offense, 100000 and one-year suspension for the second offense, to revocation of accreditation for the third offense. LTO Chief J. Artogade said private driving schools express support for the objective to make courses more affordable during a meeting, call to hear recommendations and address concerns about the new regulations. Artogade also announced the lifting of a moratorium on the applications for new private driving schools. The LTO has made driving courses more affordable, but those who still can't afford the fees of private driving schools can take the theoretical driving courses offered by the LTO at district and branch offices for free. And finally, one solution to a more efficient mass transportation system in Metro Manila may have already presented itself to the DOTR. The Department of Transportation has reported to be considering two unsolicited proposals to add to the four light rail transit lines already operating in Metro Manila. According to DOTR Secretary Jaime Bautista, one proposal seeks to establish a Metro Rail Transit line running from Monumento in Caloja to San Jose del Monte in Bulacan. Another proposal calls for establishing an overhead railway line following the length of the C5. While Bautista did not reveal details of the unsolicited proposals, published news reports identified two real projects listed by the Public-Private Partnership Center. One is an unsolicited proposal calling for the construction of an elevated railway system from Edsa in Balintabac to San Jose del Monte in Bulacan passing through Novaliches and Caloacan City with a link to the LRT-1. Another is a proposed calling for the establishment of an elevated light rail service from Naia Terminal 3 in Pasay City to Commonwealth Avenue in Quezon City, mostly running on C5. Meanwhile, the Japan International Cooperation Agency has reiterated support for plans to build more railway systems in the country, including Metro Manila. Fast-tracking the construction of lighter railway transit lines in Metro Manila should be a good idea. The metropolis desperately needs more affordable, accessible, and efficient mass transport. And those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines.
The Metro Manila Council has approved the initiative to implement a single ticketing system for traffic violations and will soon be conducting a pilot test on how this can be implemented efficiently. Motoring Forum tackles the significant development. Motorists in Metro Manila have for years faced difficulties in dealing with different traffic codes of the 17 local government units making up the metropolis. The difficulties are compatible when dealing with different sets of traffic rules enforcers as well as those of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority. For the longest time, LGUs and the MMD issued separate citation tickets, imposed different fines and penalties for traffic rules, violations, and implemented divergent processes for payments of fines, as well as recording and storing data on violations. Over the years, proposals were submitted and discussed to institute and implement a uniform traffic code as well as a unified traffic citation for the Metro Manila. And after nearly three decades of off and on discussions and studies and single ticketing system for traffic violations has been approved by the Metro Manila Council and the MMDA. The 17 mayors of National Capital Region, the MMDA and the Land Transportation Office have signed a memorandum of agreement to implement a single ticketing program in Metro Manila. The MOA comes with efforts to draft and enforce a Metro Manila traffic code that harmonizes traffic violations and penalties for all LGUs in the NCR, define the 20 common traffic infractions and standardized fines. The MMD announced that a pilot run of the single traffic system will begin on May 2, but only in the cities of Caloocan, Manila, Montilupa, Paranaque, Quezon, San Juan, and Valenzuela. The MMD didn't explain why the pilot run will be only undertaken in the seven identified cities. However, San Juan Mayor and MMC President Francis Zamora was quoted in newspapers as saying, We will start with seven cities first so we can see what needs to be improved so that implementation will be seamless for all 17 LGUs. Common traffic violations identified in the Metro Manila traffic code include illegal parking, overloading, defective motor vehicle accessories, dress code violations, obstruction and disregarding traffic signs, number coding, truck bans, and tricycle bans. The new single ticketing system will not involve the confiscation of licenses. Traffic enforcers in the seven LGUs participating in a pilot run will be issued handheld devices for issuing citation tickets as well as body cameras. Apprehended motorists would have the option of paying fines on the spot through a digital payment system online or at Bayad Centers, Land Bank, or at the City Hall. According to MMD Acting Chairman Romando Artes, traffic enforcers will have body cameras that are linked real-time with the MMDA Command Center. Before issuing the citation tickets, motorists apprehended for traffic violations are informed that body camera being monitored at the Command Center. Artes believes this will minimize chances of corruption, disputes, as well as speed up the processes of issuing tickets while lessening traffic congestion. Will a single ticketing system help make motorists more disciplined? Will it stem extortion and other forms of corruption on the road? Will it help keep traffic flowing smoothly? These questions should be the subject of more editions of Motoring Forum discussing the single ticketing system. And that's our Motoring Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track, and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Are you thinking of buying a car but don't know what model you want? Then visit the Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival presented by Caltex Philippines on May 4-7 at the SM Mall of Asia Concert Grounds. Get the best deals and test drive a wide range of the newest models, all in one venue. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival presented by Caltex Philippines. The one-stop shop for the latest car models in cooperation with SM offices and SM Mall of Asia Complex. We're back with us here on Motoring Today, and we now have this week's important motoring tips, starting off with some road safety reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines. When you're about to enter a runabout or rotonda, paunahin muna ang mga sasakyan na kasalukuyan ng tumatakbo dito. When it's already safe to do so, saka ka pumasok. Always be aware of your surroundings at huwag magmadali.
Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Pang Chuper this week. Apayo Chuper lang, kaibigan. Ako si Aliano Luico, isang kapanyo Chuper. Huwag nang ipilit magsakay ng pasayero kung hindi nakasya. Ang bawat pampasadang sasakyan ay mayroong tinatawag na passenger limit o bilang ng mga pasahero na magkakasya. Kapag puno na, iwasang magtawag pa ng ilan at ipagsiksikan. Tandaan din na bawal maglagay ng ekstra bangko sa gitna ng pampasadang sasakyan. Palaging isipin na mahalaga rin na komportable ang ating mga pasahero. Ito po si Alejandro Loico, payong chopper lang. Kaibigan, mula sa inyong kapwa niyo, chopper. Are you thinking of buying a car but don't know what model you want? Then visit the Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival presented by Caltex Philippines on May 4-7 at the SM Mall of Asia Concert Grounds. Get the best deals and test drive the latest models from Ford, GAC, GWM, Honda, Hyundai, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Subaru, Suzuki, Toyota, and WM. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival, presented by Caltex Philippines. The one-stop shop for the latest car models in cooperation with SM offices and SM Mall of Asia Complex. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. In motorsports news, the new 2023 Rally Sprint Series got off to a great start with Round 1 at the former Naval Magazine Grounds at the Subic Freeport last April 1. After two legs consisting of eight special stages, the driver towed driver tandem of John and Pauline Baranechea in the number 19 Toyota Corolla topped the RS1 class for cars with 1,350cc and below engines. The tandem of Cody Nang and Yuan C in the number 3 BMW E36 ruled the RS2 class for two-wheel drive cars with engine displacements from 1,351cc to 1,600cc. John and Luis Camus in the number 12 Toyota Corolla were quickest in the RS3 class for cars with 1,601cc to 1,800cc engines. Monde Mapilis and Alex Long in the number 2 Honda Civic topped the RS4 class for the 1,801cc to 2,000cc cars. Patrick Nang and Nixon Boliozos in the number 1 Toyota RAV4 bested everyone in the RS Open class. Inigo Anton and Alfie Concepcion in the number 15 Honda Civic was leading the RS4 class after the first leg but failed to finish the final SS8 for DNF in the round. Similarly, Carlos Anton and Caloy Calico were in a tie for first in the RS Open class after leg 1 but were only able to finish one special stage leg in leg 2. The second round of the 2023 Rally Sprint Series takes place on May 13 in Subic. More on the world of motorsports here on Motoring Today as we now give you Race Weekend. This race weekend takes us back to the R33 Drift Track in San Simon, Pampanga to show highlights of the third round of the 2023 Philippine Autocross Championship Series. We are here at the R33 Drift Track in San Simon, Pampanga for another installment of the Philippine Autocross Championship Series. Let's see what they have in store for us today. Actually, 
nag-una talaga yung sister ko, si Dr. Griff or Ashley Teton. So, she's been racing since, I think, 2017 or 18. Uh, yun, kasama nga niya si Coach Tado. And, uh, ewan ko bakit niya yung last year lang ako nag-join. Pero I've been wanting to. Siguro, kulang ako ng confidence. Pero with the help of my sister and yun nga, encouragement din ng daddy ko, ni Coach Tado, ni Ate Ashley, ayan. Uh, ayun, lumakas din loob ko and then I tried it for the first time. Sabi ko, ang saya pala, wala mo naman palang problema. So yung parang takot na sa mind lang pala. Nung tinay ko, ayan, hanggang ngayon, tuloy-tuloy. And sobrang saya, ayan, tas nakapag-build na kami ng sarili namin group or team, yung autograph niya. Ngayon, kasama na namin yung tita ko. Ay, maganda. Super. Kasi unang-una yung miss ko, and then ako yung auntie nila, sila nagtuturo sa akin. Although pilitan kami ng mga ideas. Parang bonding ba? Oo, oh, bonding namin. Bonding time namin to. Actually, I started autocross when it was on lockdown. After, uh, after lockdown, I was invited by some of my friends to join the practice session of Philippine Autocross because uh, there was no race at that time. So they opened up some uh, driving clinics or just free practice. I started the uh, official race in uh, November ng 2021 yung uh, sa Race Wars na event na kasama ko ako. So that was my first official race. And then after that, nagtuloy-tuloy na. Maganda yung track ngayon kasi mas mahaba and medyo high speed. Kasi depende sa venue, medyo may maikse, may mahabang track. Merong medyo technical, meron, meron din namang talagang medyo open yung track talaga. Mas maluwag. and I'm uh, racing for Shago Racing Team and I'm driving a Honda Civic PSI. I first joined Autocross last 2020 before the pandemic started and that's where I met Mang Dan. And then after that, when we were able to do practice runs na ganyan, ano, he reached out to me to join Shago Racing Team. And then that's when it started na turuan niya. I'm very thankful for ano, Philippine Autocross and especially kay Mang Dani. Siyempre sa tiwalang binigay niya sa akin para sa um, opportunity na makapaganito and you know, makapag... Na-discover ko yung isang bagay na gusto kong ginagawa. And that does it for our coverage of the Philippine Autocross Championship Series. Be sure to check us out next week for more Race Weekend action. The 2023 season of the Philippine Autocross Championship Series will be bittersweet with the recent passing of PAX founder Danny Santiago. The series is celebrating his life with a special DBS class. And that's this week's world of motorsports. We'll be back after this short break. Asahan kailangan ng matibay Pang matagalan kasama mo sa pag-unlad ng negosyo Modernong disenyo kaya-kaya ang cargo mo Nang tatak na ito Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up mo ang iyong negosyo Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up with Isuzu Trap is Are you thinking of buying a car but don't know what model you want? Then visit the Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival presented by Caltex Philippines on May 4-7 at the SM Mall of Asia Concert Grounds. Get the best deals and test drive a wide range of the newest models, all in one venue. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival presented by Caltex Philippines. 
the one-stop shop for the latest car models in cooperation with SM offices and SM Mall of Asia Complex. Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Teolo Moore Philippines prides itself as among the most extensive hybrid model lineups in the country. Among this is the Toyota Camry 2.5V HEV. Showcase takes a look at what the Toyota Camry 2.5V HEV offers, aside from the hybrid powertrain. The Camry has been around for many years now, attaining a global status as a best-selling executive sedan. Over many generations since it was first rolled out to the world back in the 1980s, the Toyota Camry steadily grew in size from a compact to a mid-size sedan. It also evolved from a boxy sedan to a more sleek and sporty look with a classy demeanor. The latest generation, the 8th Camry available locally, fits right in the mid-size or large executive sedan category. The Toyota Camry 2.5 VHEV is 4,885mm long, 1,840mm wide, and 1,445mm tall and clears the ground by 140 millimeters. The Camry presents a low and wide stance for that sporty yet elegant look. Sharp character lines on the hood and the sides enhance the look of an executive sedan made for top-tier individuals. That look was also helped along by the 18-inch alloy wheel strapped by 235-45R18 tires. The Camry exterior comes with all the bells and whistles of the top-of-the-line models. The slim, sharp, and swept-back headlights Quite stylish yet functional, feature bi-beam LEDs, automatic headlight leveling, daytime running lights. It comes with LED front fog lamps, outside rear view mirror set power adjust, auto track memory function as well as turn signals and rain sensing wipers. The rear combination lamps feature LED fixtures with black accents with high mount stop lamp and emergency brake signal adding to safety. Then there's the moon roof, mandatory for premium flagship models which tilts and slides and features jam protect function. The interior of the Camry is all elegance in class and state-of-the-art gugaws and whatnots. One gets into the Camry with a smart keyless entry. Inside one gets to enjoy smooth premium leather for seats, soft touch molded trim with leather on doors and dash. The cabin is quite roomy for five adults. The driver gets to enjoy a seat that hugs in comforts with 8-way power adjust, lumbar support, which can memorize preferred settings. The leather wrapped steering wheel tilts and telescopes electronically and again, the preferred can be set in memory. The instrument panel and other controls are ideally placed within eyesight and reach of the driver and featuring state-of-art tech with LED illumination, 7-inch TFT multi-information display, and economy meter. Also quite noticeable is how the thinner front pillars and taller windows provide better all-around visibility for the driver. The seats in the back where most executives can be found in executive sedans also is quite roomy and comfortable for three but it really is optimized for the comfort of two in a bath. Power sunshades in the rear and metal shades in the rear door window provide protection against hot sun or for privacy. The three-zone automatic air conditioning system makes it comfortable for all, driver, front, and rear seat passengers. A rear control panel system for seats, audio, air conditioning ensures this. The Camry comes with an infotainment system that features a 9-inch touchscreen display with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Smart Device Link, Miracast, AM FM Radio, Bluetooth, and USB connection. This plays through a 9-speaker JBL system. It also comes with a wireless charger, another thing that executive types expect to have in their sedans. Other comfort and convenient features include power windows, speed sensitive power door locks, rear USB charger, 12-volt accessory outlet, 8-cup and bottle holders, electronic parking brake. For whatever reason, Toyota Motor Philippines decided at the time of the local rollout of the 8th generation Camry to only make the 2.5 VHEV variant available, adding one more hybrid model to its local lineup. The hybrid powertrains combines a 2.5 liter gasoline engine that generates 170 PS and 221 unit meters of torque, and an electric motor that when combined produces a maximum 221 horsepower. 
by seamlessly combining an efficient gasoline engine and a high output electric motor that self charges, the Camry optimizes fuel mileage. The battery powered motor drives the vehicle at low speeds, while both engine and battery supplies power car during acceleration. The hybrid battery is charged during braking. Mated to a CVT or continuously variable transmission, the hybrid powertrain comes with three driving modes Eco, Normal, and Sport, aside from the EV mode. Like all its predecessors and why it was a global hit, the Camry 2.5 VHEV provides great comfort with good driving and handling performance. Sure-footed in switchbacks, stable at cruising speeds, and quite comfortable riding over rough spots on the streets and highways, but McPherson struts and double wishbones in the rear for the suspension and ventilated in front and solid rear discs for the brakes. And now with a complement of Toyota Safety Sense Driver Assist Tech, the Camry provides a more confident ride in varied road and weather conditions, in crowded urban streets, and wide open countryside roads. TSS Tech includes automatic high beam, lane tracing assist, lane departure alert, and dynamic radar cruise control. This complements other standard safety technologies in the Camry, anti-lock brake system, vehicle stability control, hill start assist control, blind spot monitor, rear cross traffic alert. Other safety features include 3-point ELR seat belts with pretension and force limiter in the front seat, and 3-point ELR seat belts in the rear, SRS airbags, and child restraint system. Panoramic view monitors and clearance and back sonar, 8 points all around, also make it quite easy to park the Camry even in tight spaces. If you like being driven around in style and comfort over the work week and driving yourself on fun weekend adventures outside the metro, the Camry may just be your ideal vehicle. That's our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the Toyota we go. Are you thinking of buying a car but don't know what model you want? Then visit the Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival presented by Caltex Philippines on May 4-7 at the SM Mall of Asia Concert Grounds. Get the best deals and test drive the latest models from Ford, GAC, GWM, Honda, Hyundai, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Subaru, Suzuki, Toyota, and WM. The Autofocus Summer Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival, presented by Caltex Philippines. The one-stop shop for the latest car models in cooperation with SM Offices and SM Mall of Asia Complex. Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. Car companies use the Manila International Auto Show as a stage for launching their latest models. Ford Philippines officially launched a next-generation territory at the MIAS while also presenting an exciting showcase for other members of its local lineup of SUVs and pickup trucks. Absolutely thrilled to be here at the Manila International Auto Show. We're thrilled we just unveiled the next-gen Ford territory Titanium and Titanium X in addition to all other vehicles that we've got here. On the eve of the MIAS, Ford Philippines, however, held a quieter event to give media a chance to better check out the next-gen Ford territory and explain the design changes and improvements made to the popular SUV. Right at the start when we developed this new product, look at all of the features and tech and th things that the customers love from the existing territory and how do we make those better. So the car is bigger, has a lot more tech, and certainly from the design standpoint, we've really tried to push the progressive design of the car. and so. It's really getting those customer elements that were successful in the previous territory and really amping those up to really make a successful product. So the interior design is completely unique. And I think what's key about this and what we really tried to, we've got the integrated tech with the two screens going across, and then we have this layering of the feature lines, which really gives you then the comfort, the craftsmanship, the stitching, 
And then the package inside, you'll notice with the console, there's a huge amount of space underneath the console to store items, has USB PowerPoints, etc. So it's really designed around the family. GNC Motor launched the MQ, an ultra-modern five-seater compact SUV that looks like it arrived at the Mias from the future. In launching the MQ, Jun Kahayan, brand head of GAC Motor for Astara Philippines, said the multi-brand auto distributor is proud to work with GAC Motor in bringing exceptional cars renowned for modern design, fine craftsmanship, superior build, quality, and cutting-edge technology. Hyundai Motor Philippines showcased the next full electric vehicle it plans to bring to the country soon, the Ionic 6, at the Manila International Motor Show. At the auto show, Dong Wook Lee, president of the Hyundai Motor Philippines, touted the Ionic 6 as a triple crown winner at the recently concluded 2023 Car of the Year Awards. The Ionic 6 was awarded the 2023 World Car Design of the Year, 2023 World Electric Vehicle of the Year, and the 2023 World Car of the Year. Great Wall Motor continues to amp up its return to four in the local market with a showcase of its vehicle at the Mias. What we have on display two hybrid electric vehicles and one pickup truck. And these are all the top selling brands of the Great Wall Motor Company in China, which is now the largest automotive market in uh, the world. Great Wall Motor is confident that will replicate in the Philippines the success of its automotive products in the global markets. The products are acclaimed in all the markets they're in. We're in Australia, South Africa, um, we're in Russia. Um, we're opening up in the ASEAN to uh, great results, especially in Thailand. So I think that the world has chosen Great Wall, not just us in the Philippines. One of the booths drawing crowds during the MIAS featured two automobiles with special audio systems. One with JBL speakers, the other with Infinity Car Audio speakers. Medyo hindi active si JBL sa Philippines, so nagre-launch with a distributor. Wide ang bagong distributor ngayon, so nire-launch yung produkto, JBL Infinity Car Audio. JBL is an established brand. JBL has been here since 1940s pa. So kumbaga, matagal na ang JBL sa industriya. So, mapapagkatiwalaan ang produktong to. In relaunching the two brands of car audio systems, why the marketing is targeting two different sets of audio files. But JBL is targeting the younger crowd also. It's also targeting the market that loves to listen to pop music, the more um, dynamic music, rock. Basically, when we set up with a JBL, it's like a concert hall for you, a concert experience. For Infinity in particular, the branding is all about the details of sound. So if we talk about details, I think it's easier when you say people who prefer jazz, who prefer classical music, who will bring out vocals. So the Infinity sound system will definitely have that. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 36th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with the lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.